Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today we're talking about iOS 16. iOS 16 is now one month away from being released on its first beta and it's actually really exciting. A lot of people will want to update the iOS 16 beta and probably a lot of people will even start preparing their devices for this update. But there are things that you need to know regarding iOS 16 before you update your device. So here are 10 things you need to know before you start preparing or update to iOS 16. All right, first off, bad news regarding the redesign of iOS 16. There is a report by Mark Grumman that he doesn't expect iOS 16 to be a complete redesign of iOS. Now we have been waiting for a redesign for a lot of years now. Since iOS 7, we didn't have a complete redesign of iOS and of course its UI but there will be no redesign this year as well. Even though nothing is confirmed, don't actually expect to see a major redesign on iOS with iOS 16. Now, the only thing I would be quite sure that will come to iOS 16 are new icons, but not totally new. They will probably get that 3D look like the icons that we have on Mac OS. That's probably the one of the most major changes that you will see on the UI of iOS 16 and don't expect a complete overhaul of iOS with iOS 16. Different from last year's when we got quite a lot of leaks regarding features and changes coming to new iOS versions, this year we don't actually have that much regarding iOS 16 and I think this is better. Let's just wait and see what we will get. But there are still some features that we know that are coming to iOS 16 and you need to know about. First of them, car crash detection. This is really interesting and will be super, super useful. Now, if you have an Apple Watch, you know there is a fall detection feature and that actually has just saved a lot of lives. You probably have seen on the news that a lot of cases where that feature on the Apple Watch saves lives. So now car crash detection is coming to iPhone and Apple Watch as well. We will probably have an option to enable here and under emergency and SOS or under the health settings. Another feature is notifications, new notifications, the redesign and of the notification center is coming on iOS 16, as well as new widgets we're expecting to see like interactive widgets for the home screen of our device, not like just this one that doesn't do anything at all. And hopefully new size widgets as well. The two by one would be really, really cool. And there are also new health features coming to iOS 16. We're expecting to see like at least a couple new features on the health app, like the ability to actually add your medicine. And of course, keep track on when you take your medicine and probably get notified when you have to take your medicine that will also be very very useful when talking bad news here's another thing you need to know a feature a lot of ios users have been asking for for a long time the always on display now there is a rumor that this feature will come with ios 16 but i'm afraid that this will only be exclusive to the new iphones that will be released this year. Now, this would be great if it comes to the iPhones with OLED displays. That of course means that only 12 Pros, 12 Pro Max, 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, and all those devices that have an OLED display would get this feature. But I'm afraid Apple will make this an exclusive feature to the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. Now, this would be great. But again, I'm afraid Apple will do the same as they did with the Apple Watch where you have the always on display only on the new on the newer Apple watches. So that will probably be the case in this this year as well. And they will release this feature with iOS 16, but it would be exclusive only to the newer iPhones. There are a couple of really interesting features that can be found right now on the code of iOS 15.5, but it looks like they won't make it to iOS 15.5. One of them is the rebranding of iTunes Pass as Apple Account Card. This will be really, really interesting and you will be able to find it, of course, on the wallet app. So if you buy an Apple gift card, let's say, or add money to your Apple ID, that balance will be able to be used on the Apple Store as well as to buy apps or subscriptions or movies or songs or anything else. That's really, really interesting. And also there is like a reference on the code of the classical music app from Apple. And that will actually be a separate app 
from the Apple Music app that we have currently on iOS. So we will basically have a new app on iOS 16 that will be the classical music app and will be separated. So now you will have two music apps on iOS. The next thing you need to know regarding iOS 16 is which devices it will support. Unfortunately, if you have one of the older devices that support iOS 15, the 6S, 6S Plus, or the original iPhone SE, then you won't be able to install iOS 16 on your device. Apple is cutting off support for those devices this year, and iOS 15.5 will be the latest update that you will get on your device. Of course, the latest big update, because probably we'll get some minor updates as well in the futures but don't expect to install iOS 16 on your device. Probably those devices will be dished this year by Apple because they have been supported for quite some time. Of course, we didn't expect them to be supported with iOS 15, but Apple did it and now they're cutting them off with iOS 16. Now let's move on to something really important. We have two betas that will actually be released and you need to basically separate these and know what you're doing when it comes to updating your device. First of all, June 6th will be the date that Apple is holding the event. WWDC 2022 starts on June 6th. The event will start at 10 a.m. Pacific time. It will last probably an hour and a half, and then another half an hour after the event, we will probably get the dev beta of iOS 16. So that's the dev beta and it will probably be quite unstable, will have a lot of bugs and not that great of battery life. We're going to talk about that more in a second here, but what I suggest you do is that you skip that, especially if you have a device that you use on a daily basis. Now, another thing you need to know is that there will be a public beta, but the public beta will come later on probably two, three to four weeks after the release of the first beta to the devs. So I would expect like a public beta of iOS 16 to come at around like the end of the June right here, maybe on 28th or 29th, or even right here at the 4th or 5th of July. These are the two dates that I believe Apple should release a public beta of iOS 16. Because with the first beta they, that they will release on June 6th, they will release the second one on the 20th or 21st because they will go on a two week schedule on the first couple of betas or maybe even the three, third beta. And then after that, around the third beta of devs, there will be the release of the first beta to the public. And that's when I think it is stable enough. And of course, you can go ahead and update to that public beta and test it out even on your main device. As I just mentioned, when it comes to installing beta, especially the dev beta, you should be worried a lot about the stability, the performance and the battery life of the software. Of course, it's a brand new software with a ton of new features and changes, and it will take time for it to be polished and be like more stable and have better battery life. What I think you should do, just wait for the dev for the public beta. Don't install the dev beta because that will most likely have a lot of problems. So especially if you have like a main device used daily, don't install the dev beta on that device, at least until beta two. As a conclusion, when it comes to should you update or not, if you have a second device that you don't use daily, you can install the dev beta as well. If you have only one device or your main device, you want to try it out on that device, make sure you wait for the public beta. And last but not least, another thing you should know is that you can downgrade from iOS 16. A lot of people will want to try it out, maybe then move back to iOS 15. As long as iOS 15 is signed by Apple and that will be a probably until October or November, you will be able to downgrade your device even though you're on the beta or maybe even on the public release of iOS 16, you will still be able to downgrade back to iOS 15 if you want to, so you don't have to worry about it. Only thing you need to make sure is that you update your device, you actually back up your device before you install. <laughs> Last but not least, downgrading. Yes, you will be able to actually downgrade from iOS 16 beta back to iOS 15. And that can happen until Apple stops signing iOS 15, 
probably that will be somewhere around October or November. So you will have plenty of time to downgrade if you want to. But what I suggest you do, make sure that you have a backup of your device before you update it to iOS 16 beta at first. But, but also there are all methods that will allow you to actually downgrade without losing data. But just to be sure, make sure that you also go ahead and backup your device. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and of course, subscribe for more iOS 16 videos and I'll see you on the next one.